Hey, what's going on guys? It's Michael from the Honest Youth Pastor YouTube channel, the channel that helps believers use biblical discernment in all aspects of life today. We're going to be doing that uh, by looking at a panel that was at a conference that was hosted by Rich Wilkerson's church uh, for the VU Conference 2022. Now, typically in this space, we would be using this for a sermon review, but I wanted to fit this in because I found it pretty interesting. It came across, for whatever reason, came across my YouTube feed the other day, and as I watched it and listened to it, um, there were some good things I heard and then some bad things I heard. So what I want to do today is look at this panel that VU Conference hosted in 2022. Uh, I think it was 2022. Well, well, they'll tell us here in a minute. It's called Classic Christianity. And they go through and talk about some topics that I think are good topics, but I want to kind of talk about the questions that are asked and the answers that are given by this panel. Now, we'll go through who's on the panel here in a moment. So just so you know, from the onset, this is one of the, uh, you know, normally in this spot, we look at sermons, we break sermons down, asking three specific questions. Do they preach, the, uh, do they read the scriptures? Then do they exegete the scriptures using context and culture? And third, do they preach the gospel? Now, I think we can still apply these same sort of rubric uh, to, to these answers that are going to be given by these pastors, because when it comes down to it, they are operating out of a certain mindset, a certain hermeneutic. They're, they're teaching their people via the sermons. So what's behind some of that in their theology? And I think we're going to see some of their theology um, within these questions and answers. So let's go ahead, hop over uh, to this. If you want to watch this whole panel, Without my commentary, as always, link will be in the description below. That idea of sanctification is the process of becoming like the one who has named us. Judah, maybe just for a moment, just talk about that process and how we should respond when we fall back and have moments of sin, when we're struggling with sin, when we're struggling with an addiction. Can we just share about that a little bit? Well, I think it's... it's a so what we're going to see here, and you're going to be like, Michael, why do you hate Judas Smith so much? Look, I don't. I just would. I wish you bet. I wish he had better answers. Um, what you're going to see, and I'll, I'll let you like. I'm not going to explain any of it. I'm just giving you a preface here so you can hear it, and then we'll talk about it. But it's important to understand that um, how somebody answers something tells you a lot about their theology on the back end, right? So how they process things how they see things, is it biblical? It also tells us quite a bit about, especially if they use biblical passages, um, if they are um, exegetically literate as far as, so he's going to use a parable. Um, so just listen to that and say, hey, was this the manner in which the parable was told, right? Because that will let us know, um, is, you know, are we drawing the correct concepts from what is being said here to apply what we're trying to apply it to? Now, I... That being said, I'm going to let him get into it, but I want to keep that in our mind. Anytime we hear any pastor reference, or anyone rather, reference a, a passage of scripture, one of the things I always would encourage you to do is go back to that passage and look at it within the context of the passage and ask the questions, is this, like, is the way they use that the proper way to use that? So let's, with that being said, let's, uh, let's get into his answer. It's a misappropriation of our posture and position that we've been given, right? So the process of sanctification starts with position, and then there comes practice. But oftentimes, we believe that the practice determines our position, right? So the Bible says, uh, he who knew no sin became sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that, that, that those of us who are sinful might become the righteousness of God, listen, in Christ Jesus. So, so, so my position, and I'll, I'll talk about this tonight because I always do, is I am by definition hidden in Christ, which means I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But the problem is, is we put so much emphasis on practice, 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 practice. And I'm a practical man because I'm just a guy. Of course we're practical. But sometimes we're so practical, we're of no spiritual good. We have to understand the magical, mystery, mystical ways of God that has given me my eternal position in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And, you know, great thinkers and theologians and philosophers, as Earl said, have all discussed this and debated this, but I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. A, a posture of seating is finished, done, completed, right? It's done. And that's why Jesus, to explain why he had knucklehead friends, drug dealers, and pimps and prostitutes, because the, the, the guys at the churches were like, yo, you can't have these friends. And he's like, let me tell you a story about God. And he says, there's a coin collector, and then there's a shepherd with sheep, and then there's this so he's about to get into the, the parable of the lost son. So everything up to this point wasn't terrible. 
right? Um, he was explaining the being seated in heavenly places with Christ as far as um, your position. He talks about the righteousness, uh, being the righteousness of Christ. Um, so all of this up to this point wasn't terrible, but now the parable part that I was referring to before comes in and we need to listen to that dude with two sons and da, 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 da. and then he gets to the end of the story and he's like but the one son who was wayward his practice was in error he came back to the house and he did what we all do when it comes when our practice goes in error we assume we make huge assumptions if you're ever going to be a good theologian and we're all theologians you've got to stop making assumptions right assumptions are going to they're going to at least at the best they're going to stall good development of theology right and 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 the son comes back and he assumes he says in his prepared speech to the father which again is a made-up story jesus made up it didn't actually happen but jesus made it up to reveal his character he said the boy says to the father i just make me an employee because i'm no longer worthy to be your son and that's where we got to step in and say how did you become a son or a daughter by birth or worth it was by birth that's why jesus said you must be birthed in into the kingdom you're not you're not you're not uh, developed into the kingdom you're not earned into the kingdom you don't practice your way into the kingdom you're burst into the kingdom and that position is secure so when a righteous man falls seven times he gets back up again that posture and position will inform your practice not the inverted I, I love love I love what you're talking about and this is very very important now, I do want to explain really quick before we go on. I, d I think a majority of what he said was probably pretty helpful. I just think his use of the parable uh, given in the context that it was given in Jesus telling the Pharisees, uh, painting a picture for them of the fact that they were mad of what, about what Jesus was doing for everyone else. Um, I think that that takes the context of the passage and distorts it from what it was originally doing. Now, maybe you heard something different, but from what I got from that, he's taking the actual context and turning it just a bit to make a point, even though that wasn't what the context of the parable specifically was um, necessarily about. But that being said, let's keep, uh, let's keep going because 